As we feed our body with its daily nourishment, let us not forget that more importantly, we must feed our souls with the Word of God, the food for our souls. Be a part of spreading the good news and nourishing others. Subscribe, like, share, and tap the notification bell in order to be updated every time we have a new reflection for you. Come, let us partake of the food for our souls. My dear brothers and sisters, this Sunday we celebrate the Solemnity of the Holy Family. And so I invite you to join me in reading, reflecting, and praying over the Gospel this Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord my dear brothers and sisters, as I have mentioned, this Sunday we celebrate the solemnity of the Holy Family. And our Gospel of Sunday is taken from the Gospel of St. Luke. The truth is the longer form of the Gospel is from chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. What we proclaim in our reflection for this uh, Sunday is just the shorter version. That is verses 22, then verses 39 to 40. But anyway, my dear brothers and sisters, you know the devotion to the Holy Family and the feast is something, I would say, relatively new, relatively recent. Because the devotion to the Holy Family only started in the 7th century and it was in France. It happened during the time that there was a bishop from France who was transferred to Quebec. He was the very first bishop of Quebec. And so when he arrived in Quebec as a bishop, as the first bishop, of course the first challenge that he had is that he had few priests. He needed more priests for enough to be, able, to be able to minister the whole diocese. And so what's the solution that he thought of, which is of course very wise and very practical, he built a seminary, a formation house for the young men and women, young men who want to become priests, who want to respond to the call of becoming priests. Unfortunately, even though he had already the seminary, there were few who would respond to the call to the priesthood. And so he thought of another solution. And what is that? Of course, coming from, from France, where the devotion to the Holy Family was popular at the time, he thought of introducing the devotion also to the Holy Family in Quebec. Because, oh, most of us priests, or those who became priests, if you look at their vocation story, in one way or the other, there is an influence from the family. That's why we always say that the family is the seedbed of vocation. That's why he introduced the devotion to the Holy Family in Quebec and started to have a local feast of the Holy Family. Now, in the 19th century, when in Germany, there were attacks or threats against the concept and the sanctity of the family, of its definition, the church during the time also introduced the devotion to the Holy Family in order to counterattack the threat against the family. From that time, bishops were allowed to have feasts of the Holy Family in their respective dioceses if they opt to. Fast forward, it has gone through a lot of developments, Okay, it, it evolved, but in the 19th century, that was the time when it became actually a universal feast. And at that time, it was celebrated on the third Sunday after Epiphany. It was only in 1969 when officially the Solemnity to the Holy Family was transferred to the very first Sunday after Christmas Day. And you know, the reason for transferring it to the very first Sunday after Christmas Day, it's very simple, very obvious. And what is that? Because the church tells us that after the child is being born in any family, the first that has influence in the, in the child that is born 
of course, is the family. And we see that, of course, in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ when he is born in his own family of Mary and Joseph. And that is actually the point of the Gospel this Sunday, taken from the Gospel of St. Luke. St. Luke would tell us, when the days were completed for their purification, what does that mean? Well, you know, my dear brothers and sisters, in Jewish religion or in Jewish culture, in tradition, every male, bo- every male child has to undergo three rituals or ceremonies, if you may call them. Number one, if your son is a boy, on the eighth day. What happens on the eighth day? Of course, the circumcision. It dates back or goes back, of course, to the time of Abraham. When, of course, God decided, you will be my people, I will be your God. And there will be a sign of, your, of our covenant. A sign of something that cannot be erased. And what was that? Circumcision. Now again, as I always say, allow me to say that circumcision during the time is like the equivalent of our baptism right now. Right? Because during the time of Abraham, there was no baptism yet. That's why the sign that you believe in God, circumcision. All of those who believe in God, beginning with Abraham, will be circumcised on the eighth day. And on the eighth day, when the boy is circumcised, he is also given the name. And the sign can never be erased. That's why even our baptism right now, once you are baptized, you are baptized forever and it can never be erased from you. That's number one, circumcision on the eighth day. That's why nowadays, when we think of circumcision, we're thinking it's something medical, it's about hygiene. But the truth is, in the olden times, the origin of circumcision, no. It is a sign of faith. As I said, it is like equivalent to our baptism right now. Secondly, there is what we call as the redemption of the firstborn. Why redemption of the firstborn? Oh, there are instances in the scriptures which we can see that the firstborn son always belongs to God. How do we see that in the scriptures? Well, go back, for example, during the time in the book of Exodus, remember, when Moses went up Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments. He was there for 40 days and 40 nights. And while all the rest were by the foot of the mountain, remember, they rebelled against God. And what did did they do? They collected all their golds and melted them and made golden, a golden calf and they considered the golden calf as a god. Remember? And so when Moses went down and he saw what the people did during the time that they rebelled against God. Remember? Fast forward the story. God said, okay Moses, it's very simple. Tell those who want to side with me, who believe in God, come to your side. And when Moses did that, it was the Levites who transferred to the other side and they express their fidelity to God. Now, go back to the history. Remember, before that incident, every firstborn male in the family is considered a priest. That's why if you're a firstborn son, automatically you become priest in that time. But because the Israelites rebelled against God and the Levites are the one who profess their loyalty to God. What did God say? Okay, Never mind the firstborn. They can, you can have the firstborn. I will take instead the Levites to be the priests. That's why now we say that when you think of the tribe of Levi, that is the Levites, they are the priests. But the truth is, before they were the priests, it was all the firstborn. And so God said, how many firstborn do you have? And how many Levites do we have? And the difference, because the firstborns were many, more compared to the Levites. It's a, uh, there are 273 difference. And God said, okay, you owe me 273 firstborns. Therefore, you have to ransom them. You have to pay five shekels. Now, remember also the incident. Remember when the angel of death, the death of the firstborn, remember when the angel of death, the tenth plague, and God told them, if you have the blood of the animal, put it on the, the doorpost and lintel. When the angel of death comes, the angel of death will pass over you. On that night, supposedly, all the firstborn will die. 
But because they did not die, because they believe in God, the angel of death passed over them. That's why the firstborn technically belong to God. And all the other instances you find, of course, in Leviticus and all the other uh, Old Testament uh, books that we have, that the firstborn always belong to God. That's where the tradition becomes. The first harvest belongs to God. When the Israelites will be traveling, the first city, which is actually Jericho, will belong to God. Every first belongs to God. That's why if your firstborn is a son, you have to redeem him. And in the book of Leviticus, five shekels. Now, remember, Jesus is the firstborn. That's why he has to be redeemed. That's why in our story, Jesus had to be brought to the temple. And third, what is that? To be purified. Why is there a need to, for, for purification? Because, of course, for the Jews, and not only for the Jews, even us, of course, our belief is blood is life. Because if you remove the blood from your body, you die. That's why the concept of the Jews is that anybody who gets in touch with blood becomes unpure. You never touch, get in touch with blood. That's why for the women on a monthly thing, you become impure and you're not allowed to join any religious activity nor enter the temple. Now, of course, giving birth, you also get in touch with blood. That's why when you give birth on the 40th day, if your child is a son, is a boy, you have to be purified on the 40th day. And at the end of the gospel this Sunday, St. Luke tells us when they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of God. Well, to cut the story short, my dear brothers and sisters, our gospel tonight, or rather this Sunday, tells us of the obedience of the Holy Family to the will of God. The Holy Family is not just Holy Family, but of course, first of all, because Jesus is the member of the family. But another reason why they can be considered holy is that because in their lives, individually, and even as a family, the will of God is always number one. You see that in the Gospel this Sunday, that they were faithful to all the prescriptions of the law. And remember that in their culture, the law is the expression of the will of God. The family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph is truly a holy family. Not just because Jesus is a member of the family, which is the most important reason, but not just that. They are considered holy family because the will of God is always the center of every member of the family and as a family. My dear brothers and sisters, this solemnity of the Holy Family, let us pray for our respective families that truly may we also become holy families because in the life of every member of our family and in the, mem in the whole family, the will of God is always the one that is a priority. In a special way, also my dear brothers and sisters, in the solemnity of the Holy Family, we remember all of those families are going through difficult moments of their family life that they may experience love, forgiveness, understanding, and care for one another. Let us pray. Loving Father, as we continue to be in the Christmas season, we thank you for giving us your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to be our Savior, to be our Messiah. And of course, with Jesus Christ, thank you for, we thank you for giving us Mary to be your, the mother of your only begotten Son, to be our mother, and Saint Joseph, who took care of him. We ask you to listen to the prayers of all families. We ask you to touch the hearts of all the fathers, all the mothers, that they may be good examples to their children and also they may do good teachings to them. We ask you to touch the hearts of all children that they may always love their parents, respect them, and obey them. But in a special way, loving Father, we remember all of those families who are going through difficult moments in their family life that they may have the love, the understanding, the forgiveness and the care for one another. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed solemnity of the Holy Family. God bless all of you. Thank you for partaking of the Word of God, the food for our souls, and being part of spreading the good news and nourishing others. May God bless and protect you.